only in a, in a city where the car is so ubiquitous that you cannot imagine a man in, in Los Angeles or a person above the age of puberty who does not have a car. No way. It's just like imagining a guy living in New York uh, and making his way around town who simply doesn't own a pair of shoes. It is an unimaginable thing. You cannot imagine a guy carrying out without shoes, right? Now, you may go barefoot occasionally, but you've got a pair of shoes somewhere. In Los Angeles, the car is as ubiquitous as shoes. It's not a status symbol, I repeat to you. It's only a status symbol, the car, in places where the car is rare, obviously. Cars are universal in L.A., so the car has lost practically all of its status symbolism. I hate to disappoint a lot of writers who keep thinking it is, but that's because they come from Brooklyn where hardly anybody owns a car, right? <laughs> but uh, seriously, it would never occur to a writer in Los Angeles that a car is a status symbol any more than to write about a guy's underwear as a status symbol. Just ain't true. Uh, out in L.A., you either got a car or you're living in forest lawn. Uh, it's just about that. You know what forest lawn is? Well, that's the major uh, funeral emporium out there. It's a gigantic cemetery that has canned music playing day and night. Uh, Non-denominational canned music, but they play. <laughs> so, uh, nevertheless, out in in, uh, in Los Angeles, the car has has become a universal thing. Everybody has a car. Now, what does this cause? Well, it causes some curious, uh, you might say, side effects. To begin with, the car has lost its identity. And so, just a couple of years ago, this happened to me. The first time I'm out in L.A. on business. I'm riding along one of the freeways, actually, the San Diego freeway, and I'm driving along the freeway with this guy, this friend of mine. See, we're hurdling along. By the way, the freeways, if you've never driven on a freeway and, uh, and, and are planning to do it, uh, I would suggest that you do a lot of push-ups before you go out to the coast, uh, eat a lot of carrots so that your eyesight is good, uh, do a lot of things to improve your reflex action, you know, do some uh, chin-up stuff and uh, run around the block a lot. Because driving along the, any one of the freeways, the Santa Monica Freeway, the San Diego Freeway, is like taking a ride on a major and highly dangerous ride in some manic amusement park. I mean, they hurdle. They do not drive. They hurdle. And uh, it's not at all uncommon on a uh, on an average day for an accident to occur on the San Diego freeway that involves 175 cars. They just keep whamming into each other. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And uh, sometimes there's a whole line of, of mangled iron that stretches for nine miles, uh, practically all the way to uh, Palm Springs, which is 100 miles in the desert. So uh, you've got to be ready for anything. And, uh, and w plus the fact that L.A., like many tropical places today, has two groups of uh, drivers that cause driving to be very exciting. Uh, there are large numbers of octogenarians live there. I mean, these are people who are 80 years old and over, many of whom have not received the driver's test since they got their first driver's license in Ames, Iowa, in 1902, when they, <laughs> when they were driving their, their, uh, their uncle's... Uh, uh, simplex crane or crane simplex around the farm and they have been licensed ever since now many of these old duffers and women too have, eye, have, have eyesight that enables them to see clearly the dashboard beyond that it is a gray haze uh, many of them have not seen the hood of their car for many years and so they boom along the freeway at 87 miles an hour, absolutely unheeding the, of, of the law of gravity or whatever else. Now, there's another group of drivers that you find is another exciting crowd. There's a great crowd of guys under 20 who are three-quarters of the day totally bombed out of their skull, who have, like many drug-oriented people, have a feeling of immortality. So they hurtle down the freeway... <laughs> <laughs> at 107 miles an hour, uh, and everything is a gray-purple haze in front of them. So between the octogenarian and the guy that's high on, on H or, 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 the, or the little C or, or a pot or whatever it might be, you have, you have a large collection of people 
who simply haven't seen the road in years, and they go roaring along. In fact, I saw them pulling a kid out. I'll tell you a funny scene. I saw, I saw on the San Diego freeway some guy, for some insane reason, uh, driving along, Suddenly, he backed right off the road. He's going like 100 miles an hour. Suddenly, he just backed right up, and he's, he's halfway up a hill with his car pointing down with the both sides squashed in. Remember that guy? And they are pulling him out. I could see the cops, and this guy's eye, he's got three eyes in his head. He's staggering around, you know, obviously bombed out of his bird. What he hit, I don't know. About 20 minutes later, I see four octogenarians being hauled out of the bushes, they had just clobbered about 15 people. So out there, uh, driving on any one of these freeways can be a highly exhilarating experience. Very exciting. And uh, so this is, this is part of the life out there. But I'm driving along with this friend of mine out on the San Diego freeway. You know, we're whipping along. And uh, I didn't know what much to say to him. He really wasn't a friend of mine, just a guy I knew. Seeing, and I hadn't seen him for some time. You don't know what to say to a guy. And uh, we're booming along and the smog is swirling on either. It's not really smog in the New York sense. Uh, uh, there, there's a curious haze that hangs in Los Angeles all the time. It's kind of a yellowish color. And uh, some people who have sensitive eyes have been known to have burning eyeballs for years on end. I'm not one of those, luckily, but the uh, people I was with, they just constantly wiping their eyes and pouring Visine in their eyes and all that. So we're, we're, we're rolling along the San Diego freeway, and I'm looking for something to make uh, small talk with. And, uh, and I see that we're in the, you know, kind of a new car. So I said to the guy, I says, hey, uh, I'm, you know, I'm kind of interested in cars. And I said to him, uh, hey, uh, uh, Warren, uh, what kind of car is this? Well, what is this? Uh, is this is this one of those new cougars, you know? And uh, he looks looks at the car, all of a sudden he looks at me with a funny look. He says, "What do you mean?" I said, "What kind of a car is this?" He says, oh, "Oh, what kind of a car?" He says, "Oh, how, he says, how the hell should I know? It's my wife's." Okay, uh, here was a guy who did not know what kind of a car his wife had, and he lived with her. <laughs> he was driving his. Wife's car, but he still, it was the car has so little identity out there, he didn't even know what kind it was. So I, I laughed, see, and he said, What, you know, he couldn't understand what I was laughing at. I laughed. I says, You know, I can't, I can't conceive of a guy driving his wife's car and he doesn't even know what kind of a car she owns. He said, Oh, oh I, I don't know. I guess the, he didn't quite get it, see. He says, Well, I guess it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's probably a, a cougar or something. I don't know. And so we just drove on. Well, now that, that was significant. I didn't realize how significant it was until what happened to me just two days ago has to be reported. I'm staying, when, when I got out there, of course I get out of the, got out of the airplane, uh, you know, we flew out, and uh, it's the middle of the afternoon. Now you got to have a car out there. No conceivable way. So the rental car is a major business out there. I mean, it's just fantastic. So I immediately go to the, the Hertz place, and uh, I walk over there, and uh, they uh, they said okay, and they 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 give me this uh, this uh, little ticket to wait for my car to come. I you know made all the arrangements, and they look at your driver's license and the whole bit. And uh, sure enough, about eight seconds later, the car whips up in front of me, and here I am. I've got oh, they actually take me out in this little bus. That's the way they do. They get a bus, see, so they take you out in this big lot, tremendous lot with about twelve thousand cars, as far as the eye can see. And this is the Hertz lot, millions of cars. And uh, they take me up and down row after row after row after row of cars. And finally, we stop in front of this brown Pinto station wagon. Now, you got it? It's a brown Pinto station wagon. And uh, the girl says, uh, this is your car. So, okay. So I unload all the stuff, throw it in the car. And uh, I get into the car. I throw the key on. And now I'm off, right? So I drive, I drive out of the lot. And uh, I drive down the street. And by the way, out in, in uh, they had a lot of great things out in L.A. that we do not have here in New York. For one thing, do you know that as you drive into the airport or around the airport, they have big signs that say, tune your radio to 530 on the dial. And when you get your radio set to 530 on the dial, they have a, a an airport radio station that does nothing but broadcast stuff pertinent to what's happening today. For example, you tune in there and the guy says, uh, flight number 422, American Airlines to Albuquerque, will be 27 minutes late in arriving. 
That means there will be a 30-minute delay in boarding Flight 522 to Albuquerque. Flight uh, 7, TWA to New York City, will be on time. Flight 9. And, you know, it's kind of great. You just hear all this stuff. Then they give you traffic stuff, uh, stuff like uh, uh, those passengers who are uh, emplaning on TWA number 7 for New York City will take the left lane as they arrive at the ramp. There is a delay in the right lane. Please take the left lane. And, you know, this is kind of great. They tell you where to get cabs and all that stuff. In addition to that, you know what they also have out there, because the car is so ubiquitous and has been accepted as reality in uh, in L.A., that whenever you drive through a tunnel or a bridge, they have a special antenna and a tunnel transmitter system so that when you drive in, your car radio does not stop. It automatically continues. In other words, your radio would continue as you go right through the Holland Tunnel here, giving you traffic information and so on. New York is way behind the times, friends. <laughs> way behind the times. It really is. They've even got these things in Pittsburgh. New York, well, we're still flubbing around, you know. We got those old wind-up Motorola radios in our car that, you know, were made in 1932. But uh, nevertheless, I, I, I got my car, see. So I drive in to the hotel. Now, the hotel I'm staying at was where I was doing this show. I was doing a show from the for the uh, National Association of Record Manufacturers. It was a tremendous hotel, Century Plaza. The thing is is like a gigantic uh, Pan Am building turned upside down on its side, an enormous thing. So I'm way up on the 18th floor. Now, when you drive in, they take your car. They have a tremendous garage, big system, you know, all kinds of guys come and take your car. And, and the, the, the minute you want your car, you go down, you tell them what room you're in, and bam, your car comes, right? So... Uh, I don't use the car for a couple of days because I'm there rehearsing the show. Well, finally, one day, I decided I had to have the car. So I called down. I said, this is uh, Shepard. I'm in room 1835. I like my car. The guy says, okay. Right away, sir. So I go down, and here's this great big ramp, esplanade. People, cars are coming in about nine lanes of them. Boy, it's fantastic. Well, I see parked over to the left there, I see a brown Pinto station wagon. Well, I figured that you know, must be my car. So I walk over and I look in the car. I say, no way can it be my car. I see this great big golf bag, tremendous golf bag in the back of it. And I see a pair of prescription glasses on the, on the, on the dashboard, believe it or not. And there's a pair of tennis shoes. I say, oh, no, that's not my car. So I walk back. So I wait and I wait and I wait and a lot of people are getting their cars. And finally I realize I'm not going to get my car. So I go up to the guy and I say, where's my car? He says, what row are you in? I say, 1835. He said, oh, that car's gone. It's been gone a long time. I said, what? I said, I didn't take it. He said, well, it's gone. You drove it out. I said, no, I didn't. At which point, he calls the kid, and each kid has a certain set of rooms that he handles. And he said, yeah, a lady got in and drove away. 1835. I said, well, that's not fun. Somebody took my car. Oh, he says, oh, well, that happens all the time. He says, uh, that's probably her car over there. So I walk over, and I, yeah, I look in again. I says, well, how, how could she take it? I mean, my car has uh, nothing in it. My car's empty. But hers has got this golf bag in the back. It's got the glasses up on the up on the dash. It's exactly the same color car and everything, but it's got, the, you know, all the stuff. He says, oh, they do that all the time. He says, nobody looks at his car. He just gets in and drives away. I said, well, what am I going to do? He says, well, take her car. So I said, okay. <laughs> I get in, and I drive off. So I'm driving around with this this person's car. It's got the golf bags and glasses and the tennis shoes and all that. So I go to my appointment. I come back and my car still hasn't returned. I said, well, what about my car? What am I going to do? So they'll bring it back. They probably don't even know they got the wrong one. I said, well, how can, he, how can that happen? I said, what do you mean, how can it happen? It happens all the time. You know, they just can't drive away. Well, sure enough, uh, he was right. My car was gone all night. And most of the next day. And all of a sudden, it was driven back in at noon the next day. No comment made, just driven in and put down in the garage. <laughs> and, uh, which makes me believe that people out there, the car is so common and so ubiquitous that nobody even looks at it, even when the most obvious things are there. Oh, and then, then I talked to the guy down on the ramp. I said, hey, come on, you're, you're putting me on. He says, we get three or four of those a day.